Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 High Yield Concepts for the Lung Volumes. This should be another short and pretty straightforward video, so let's just go ahead and get started. So this is the basic lung volumes graph. There are a couple different ways to represent this. I know there's a different one in first aid, um, but I like this one the best. It's pretty simple, color coordinated, so that's what I'm going to be referencing throughout the rest of this video. Before we continue, just a couple quick points. Uh, first of all, total lung capacity, which we're going to see in a minute. Total lung capacity in a healthy adult is about six liters. You don't need to know too many numbers when it comes to lung volumes, but that is one that I would know. Total lung capacity in a healthy adult is about six liters. If it's anything less than six liters, you wanna be thinking about a restrictive lung disease. If it's anything more than six liters, you wanna be thinking about an obstructive lung disease. The next important point is that a volume plus a volume equals a capacity. And what I mean by that is if we go back here, if we see this volume plus this volume, it'll uh, form a capacity. So basically to get a capacity, you just have to add two volumes together. Same thing up here. And we'll see that again later. The last point is that functional residual capacity, FRC, is high yield. Probably a little bit more high yield for step two than for step one, but we'll take a special attention to that once we get there. But let's start here with total lung capacity, TLC, uh, which we have right here. This is essentially the volume of air in the lungs after a max inspiration. This is the total amount of air that is ever going to fit in your lungs. And like I already said, six liters for a healthy adult. So this entire curve here is our total lung capacity. And we see that it is six liters. The next value that we want to know is tidal volume, which is the volume of air entering the lungs after a normal inspiration. It's about 500 milliliters, half a liter. Um, so we have it right here. Uh, again, I said you don't really need to know the numbers very much. This is one I would just have a rough idea of, and I feel like most medical students just know this by heart. Another way to represent tidal volume is as the volume of air exiting the lungs after a normal expiration. That's why we see the peaks and troughs of tidal volume here. It can enter the lungs after a normal inspiration or it's the air exiting the lungs after a normal expiration. That is tidal volume. The next one that we have here is expiratory reserve volume and we have that right over here. What this is essentially is the volume of air in the lungs that can still be exhaled after a normal expiration. So we see here, if we go back to tidal volume real quick, we have a normal inspiration, then we have a normal expiration. The volume of air that can still be pushed out of the lungs after that normal expiration is our expiratory reserve volume. And this is about one liter. Not very important to know that value, but just in case, try to commit it to memory. The next one that we have here is residual volume, which we see right here. This is the volume of air remaining in the lungs after max expiration. So just going back to the graph here, with tidal volume, we had our normal inspiration and then our normal expiration. Our expiratory reserve volume, we pushed all the air out of our lungs that we could, and the residual volume is what's remaining. It's about 1.2 liters, and this is the volume of air that you're never going to be able to force out of your lungs. The next one here, inspiratory capacity. Remember, now that we have two volumes that are being added together, we're going to get a capacity. So we have inspiratory capacity over here. This is the volume of air that can be inhaled in addition to a normal inhalation. And it's about 3.8 liters. So going back here is tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. That's our entire inspiratory capacity. There are a couple equations here. Um, I'll show you the higher yield ones, but obviously just looking at this, you can see that there are certain ways to calculate certain capacities, um, and, and that's not too high yield, but we'll get to the high yield ones in a minute. Important to note here, do not forget that inspiratory capacity includes tidal volume. So take a look at this right here. Inspiratory capacity includes that regular inhalation that you would have, as well as the maximum in inhalation that you can fill into your lungs. Next, we have functional residual capacity, which is one of the ones that I said was a little bit higher yield. This is the volume of air remaining in the lungs after a normal expiration. So we have it right here, functional residual capacity. It's about 2.2 liters. I haven't seen that number come up very often, but try to remember it just in case. The volume of air remaining in the lungs after a normal expiration. 
Important to note here that there are a couple different ways to calculate it. I would try to memorize these equations just in case they give you the numbers or they give you a graph and ask you to calculate. So we can see here that functional residual capacity is uh, residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume, which we can see right here. If we add these two numbers together, we're going to get this brown box, the functional residual capacity. Another way to calculate it, probably not as important, but it is still a way that works is um, subtracting the inspiratory capacity, which we have right here, from total lung capacity. That would also give you the functional residual capacity. And then the last value that we have here, vital capacity. This is the volume of air that can be exhaled after a max inspiration. So we have vital capacity right here. If you take your normal inspiration in and out, and then you take a full breath as much as you can fill your lungs, and then you exhale as much as you can all the way down here, that would give you your vital capacity. And that is about 4.8 liters. Uh, vi vital capacity is, for, for me at least, it's a little bit more confusing than the rest of them and probably the lowest yield. I don't expect that you would see a question on this, but it, it is there. And just a, a quick thing to note here as well, as you can see, if you add together the vital capacity, the total amount of air, that you can exhale after a max inspiration with the residual volume, the air that you're never going to get out of your lungs, that will give you that total lung capacity of about six liters. Okay, so that is the end of the video. Hopefully this was pretty straightforward for all of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to turn on the notifications so that you can get updates when I upload new videos. Guys, thank you so much for watching and good luck with your studying.